Hello everyone, welcome along to MagicTheGathering.com and GG's Live, Rich Hagen, Sheldon Mennery bringing you the final of Grand Prix Orlando 2012 between two giants of the game, Patrick Chapin, the innovator from StarCityGames.com and Conley Woods, there he is from Channel Fireball, bordering on the very brink of world's triumph and now here they go going at it in game one of the best of three standard is the format Sheldon tell us about the match well both of these decks were designed to face the best deck in the field uh, the Delver decks and we have evidence that of their success because they've gotten here to the finals there's no other there, there are no Delver decks left standing uh, both of these decks have had great records against Delver throughout the Swiss. Conley obviously had to beat Paulo Vitor Damo de Rosa and his Delver in the quarterfinals. Now we have control, pseudo-control with some aggression mm -hmm. versus ramp. And there are a lot of elements, there are a lot of moving parts to this to this deck. You know, we talk these decks, we talk uh, before the first round about the, the, the sort of beautiful ballet uh, and the myriad moving parts in Magic, you're going to see a lot of moving parts here. There's going to be... And, and what I really like about this matchup is both players are going to have to play their decks. It's not... You know, to some extent, with some of the decks, you put cards on the table and they do the rest of the work for you. Mm -hmm. Here, I think the players are going to have to do a lot of work. So... Honda has owned us up from Patrick Chapin, Rampant Growth from Conley, Conley now goes for Sphere of the Suns, that's Accelerant number two. The, the, so, problem for, the problem for Pat right here is if he does something, if he does anything, then Conley has a, has a free pass to, to cast something with six mana. Obviously he's going he's gonna to have to play with a mana leak. Conley's dropping his mountain. And there's Solemn Simulacrum. So it's one of those mid-range issues where Patrick probably doesn't want to counter spell, but Conley gets not only a guy, but also a land out of it. So it's just, you're probably going to let me have this, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I probably am. And, and he does. And certainly don't forget that when Solemn goes to the graveyard, which Pat is, is eventually going to want to do... Conley's going to draw a card. Now, now Pat, the the problem with Pat is for Pat here is having not cast anything and not countered whatever Conley cast. He's got to cast something. Now he's got the pristine Tal talisman, which means he still has he still has mana leak mana. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for Conley. See if he's patient. Looks like he is. If he gets a ninth mana on next turn, means he can he can cast one of his titans and still have mana to pay for the mana leak. And I think the aggression of Conley's deck is sufficient that the the pristine talisman, unless Chapin can make this a really long game, the pristine talisman doesn't have a significant impact. It's not going to matter because Conley, at the point at which you have. Titans in play. You'd quite, you'd quite happily beat someone down from sixty. Yes. With a pair of Titans. Yes. In approximately four or five turns. <laughs> well, so, especially, you know, especially with all, yeah, especially if one of them is, is a Grave Titan. Yeah. And he's bringing right, friends. It's, it's not even. No, n not relevant. Chapin's pondered and he's shipped them. Didn't like what he saw on the top. Gripful for Chapin, three cards for Conley Woods. So land in the play tapped. Again, Pat has mana leak mana up, but I think at this point... Conley does the first things first. And now maybe we're about to see some serious action. He begins by tapping two black, plus four others. Grave Titan. That resolves, and you will get 
two more zombies. Fitting when we actually have zombie apocalypse coming in dark. Yes. Dark Ascension, if this turns out to be, in standard, the zombie apocalypse. Yes. I. The, the next question I was going to ask Zach before we ran out of time mm. was why zombie apocalypse didn't kill the humans first and then make zombies out of them. Because it's, it's sort of the... Uh, the, the reverse of that, is it? Yeah. Is it? yeah, yeah. It brings back all your zombies and then kills the humans. <laughs> but where do, you, where do zombies come from? They come from humans. Oh, not the zombie stork. Right, not the zombie right, stork. Okay. The zombie stork does not fly in. Right. All right. Let's see what, uh, let's see what Pat Chapin has brewed up here. He needs a significant play. It looks like he's tapped five. He's going to need something at some point. We've been in alchemy. Puts one into hand. End of turn. Untap. Draw. He needs a play here. Ah, a little raised eyebrow there from Chapin. Ah. There's Conley Wood, there's the stair. I think there's there's more to that passivity than just trying to intimidate your opponent. I think when you're still and you're watching your opponent, you have a better chance of picking up anything that they might be telling you. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the nervous twitch of a hand or the the way his eye your eyes is your opponent's eyes look at his cards, there might be something that he's telling you. So Chapin gained some life. And I'm going to Devil's Play, the Grave Titan. Not a terrible plan. He's going to... It's gone. It's gone. He's going to eat six to the face. But that's fine, because that, that doesn't kill him just yet a while. The big question is, does Conley have another Titan... Uh, to to go round again while it's like a prime time. time. Yes, does indeed. It's a prime time, of course. So now there's twelve damage on the board. He fetches out Kessig Wolf on Ink Moth Nexus. So now there's lethal on the board. Pat needs <laughs> uh, some kind of miracle here. Was that Life's Finale a main deck card or a sideboard card? For Let's him? have a very quick look yeah, through here. One of the three we have one Life's Finale in the sideboard. sideboard. Nothing main. Uh, oh, no, no, no. He can Black Suns for four. Draws. Looks at a huge grip, but all the action is on the right-hand side of the table. Solemn Simulacrum, two zombies, Primeval Titan, Kessig Wolfrun, Ink Moth Nexus, Chapin at 13. Effectively 14 <laughs> with Pristine, Pristine Talisman. Sure. But 14... Still insufficient. Still insufficient. Life's Finale is pretty savage coming in, to be fair. Yes. Not only does it destroy your creatures, you search target opponent's library for up to three creature cards, put them into his or her graveyard. So, all of a sudden, you're a ramp deck that ramps into five-eighths of what you were planning on right. ramping into. But that's for game two. Life's Finale not available to Chapin right now. He's still trying to survive game one. So... See what he Six. does. An Inferno Titan would be a, would help, and there it is. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he does with it. Two to one of the zombies and one. Conley is going to say no. Remove the counter from 
through the sun. And we're done. One nil to Comey Woods. Very quick time once again. All business and kindly needs one out of the <laughs> There we are in cracks. That's the old combi. And he's been, the thing is, he hasn't gone away. It's that's still who Conley Woods is. Yeah, he, away from the table. Yeah, I, and I think I think he he brings he he reigns in his personality and this elite athletes in all fields have a can can narrow their focus to to the to the spot that they need, mm-hmm. and I think that's what Conley Woods is doing. So, I suppose we're going to see that that life finale out of uh, Pat's sideboard. Yeah, so he's got a single mana leak, a mm, couple of negate, a couple of dissipate, tubular sun zenith, single calm liberated, Sorin's vengeance, curse of death's hold, two ancient grudge, life finale, ratchet bomb, Liliana of the Veil. Now, arguably, the ancient grudges might appear because if he can go... If Conley looks at a hand that says, okay, I ramp up growth, I sphere of the, uh, sphere of the suns, uh, then I go solemn simulacrum, and then I sphere of the suns again. That kind of draw. And Bradshaw goes, well, first of all, I'm going to put your sphere of the suns in the bin. Yep. Then I'm going to flash it back to put your other sphere of the suns in the bin. Your 2 is going to die. Right. And suddenly, th- th- it, there is a potential. A card, yeah. yeah, there's a potential there. Uh, life's finale, I imagine, will occur. Yeah. Not sure what else. Uh, from Conley's point of view, he's got two Curse of Death's Hold. Well, the good news is for Conley, they've done their job. Yes, they've I don't him. know what he invested in his Curse of Death's Hold, but whatever it was, they've been well worth it. Yeah. They, <laughs> and, and they can sit quietly in the, they, in the they, box. <laughs> they certainly brought him to the dance. Yeah, they absolutely. So they can retire for at least this tournament. Uh, one ratchet bomb, perilously slow and, and of no real use. Black Sun Zenith, that's the kind of card that, I mean, it's going to cost eight to kill Titan. Right. But then again, how else is he killing Titan? Right. You know, and the answer to that, he's got a couple of Batter Skull, Gnarl Spell Bomb, again, uh, has no. I guess he has a little interest in fiddling with uh, Chapin's Graveyard in the sense he's got Forbidden Alchemies to get rid of, but it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't invest a lot in that. I mean, there's Desperate Ravings and Forbidden Alchemy. They're, they're the, the big sort of card draw mm-hmm. spells um, for Chapin, which can be messed with. Um, Certainly this front is coming in. Sure. Okay, Pat, with targeted removal. Mm-hmm. Tree of Redemption, Viridian Corruptor, um, Liliana of the Veil, exactly as Chapin has. A Garrick Primal Hunter, go for the throat. Uh, and Conley too has uh, an Ancient Grudge. So it doesn't feel like either player has some gigantic edge uh, on sideboarding where they've just completely missed each other's decks on the way past. And oh, could have done with seven cards against right. you. Well, the, 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 the seven cards... The, the seven cards sideboard is, you know, the, the transformative sideboard against yeah. the particular deck. It's not what these decks do. No, no. Uh, again, they were already well positioned against the field to to do well. So, I, I think they didn't. They weren't worried about anything other than they main decked their <laughs> most of the things they were their, their transformative sideboard, if you will. Yeah. So we'll see Pat. We'll see Pat Chapin on the play. Now. See if he likes his hand or not. Conley waiting to see if Pat likes his before he even picks up his cards. Okay, I don't want this to be a leading question. It's just genuinely throwing it out there. I understand that there is a strategic advantage to not even seeing your hand because you don't have to, you can't possibly give away information that right. you don't yet know. But is there not an element of stalling to watching your opponent go through the mulligan decision and refusing so. to even play no. at that point? Okay, that's fine. I, I mean, I think I, the amount of time it takes to, to pick up your deck and look at it is really insignificant. It's not, it's not the picking unless up. You it's, waited, it's, I mean, it's unless you've waited a long time. Yeah, it's like yeah. While, they're, while they're having their tough decision, you right. just refuse to look. I, I, might, I might think it can be <laughs> significant if, if, if time were already a factor in the match. Sure. I mean, context, context is extremely important in judging things like a player, whether a player's cheating or not. 
Now here we go with the arc the uh, artifact plan and look at that, you draw it up in our conversation. There's a sphere and there's ancient grudge out of the board. So accelerant, I don't think so. It's like you're the amazing Kreskin Rich. We'll talk about that afterwards, so yeah. you can explain that to me. Is that a breakfast cereal? So Ancient Grudge, and now of course, although the surprise isn't there, the Ancient Grudge is in the board. So if Conley runs out for another one, he already knows that it can just die instantaneously. I, I suppose that Conley expected the Ancient Grudge to come in. Sure, but you don't... Uh, inevitably, you don't take out your spheres. You're going to play them. You just trust that the ancient grudges uh, aren't going to be seen. I mean, he only has two right. Chapin, so, and, and Chapin had w w was courteous and, and had yeah. a had a smile at the fact right. that he had drawn it and, the, and there it was. So we, we see, we see uh, Conley there green suns for one for the bird. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the zeniths at a level to play, you, you don't have to hold on to the card. If it's, it's going to be good early, you might as well you might as well run it. Mm -hmm. You know, get it out there because if you're going to shuffle back in your deck, you're going to be able to get something fat later on. Chapin is going to alchemy at the end of turn. Draws. And now, still twenty. Liliana, each, of it looks course. like. Yep. In the honor of the veil, planeswalker time. I think it's probably worth it to uh, sack the bird. Yep. So Liliana one, the only non-land permanent early, and that sphere of the sun has gone. Remember for Conley. Two pieces. Two pieces of ramp now. Mm -hmm. In the bin, as you call it. Very definitely not rampant right now. Just the dust uh, bin. Three. Correct. Yes, that's the yes in the bin. In Who's the bin. in the bin? Answer: Birds of Paradise and Sphere of the Suns. Who's in the bin? No doubt, uh, the British game show starring Clive Anderson. You're extremely close. Who's in the bin? Uh, came from a satirical uh, puppet show called Spitting Image. Um, I know Spitting and Image. Incredibly famous politicians yep. and rock stars yep. would mysteriously be in the revealed bin. in the dustbin. So we see Conley activate the Inkmoth Nexus to to kill off the Liliana. And drop a land, so he is on par with Chapin, one behind, which which he has to consider being behind at this point. I was going to say, I mean, it's not just the one, it's the fact that by now he's meant to be at seven, if you will. Front. There's a little bit of glare on that, I can't see what it is. I have a suspicion that that will be thrown. That is thrown, yep. Thrun a little difficult thrun a little difficult for for Pat to deal with. And he's chipping the turn already. So we're gonna see the last troll mm -hmm. get into the red zone. Once again, Conley not giving anything away by playing a land early. There's an exitic slime. Yeah, there is only one in Conley's deck, so it will indeed be the last roll. It's either there for the duration or gone forever. Conley's got a solemn simulacrum in hand, and whether he wants to take out the ancient grudge, the, the flashback. Uh, Chaben now snap cast a mage. Gets to forbidden alchemy. Looks at the hand at the bottom of your screen on the left. Adds one. Looks like, amongst other, it looks like two copies of Desperate Ravings uh, are going to the graveyard, which is exactly the kind of thing you want out of the bin now, Conley. Yes. And so this is why I wonder whether Conley has brought in the Nile spell bombs because right now to get rid of two Desperate Ravings out of the bin plus an Ancient Grudge that feels like an eminently reasonable. Yeah, but it, it feels like it feels like it's that's playing a little defensively. Sure. Although the I mean the card draw on the spell bomb might make it worth you know may, might make it worth a mitigating uh, a mitigating factor yes possibly ooh little uh, from uh, Chapin I 
Lonely Woods, one up, has the edge. Liliana of the Vale uh, comes down, and uh, even before the counters go on, uh, Carly's like, yeah, okay, there's my guy sacked. There's my, my acidic slime's gone. That's fine. Conley, five cards in hand. Four for Chapin. Run versus Snapcaster Mage. Can't see the head on the right of shot. I'll wager that's Martin User from the fact. Yep. yep. Oh, he's and like you know on why? cue. Because he's wearing the Czech Republic Channel Fireball shirt. Yep. Ink Mark Nexus is going to come attack Liliana again. And Thrun is going to bash into you. that Snapcaster. So Snapcaster will go away. Pat with a little thought on that play. Uh, okay, so he's going to uh, kill off uh, the Ink Moth. And there's the Ents. Because Chabin now tapped out, so there's a little value for uh, Conley and stunting things a little bit. Leon is going to have to survive another turn before it, it once again gets value. Mm -hmm. And that's why Chabin leaves his Snapcaster back, knowing that uh, once you've killed off the, the Ink Moth, the theory goes that you can then uh, protect yes. uh, against uh, Thrum. But that's by no means what's looking like it's panning out. There's already Ink Moth uh, number two on Conley's side of the table, Solemn Sim and Thrum the Last Troll against a lonely Snapcaster Mage and a somewhat unexciting Liliana at one right now. The, I think Conley might have held the land back in his hand because of the Liliana. And that is Chapin in the tank. It's Chapin. I know, I know Pat is, is a great gamesman and a good actor mm -hmm. and a fine mime, but that looks that's like he, real. <laughs> that's real. That, that looks like he really doesn't like his hand. He's, he's going to have to... That's, that's the face of, of somebody trying, is, that's going to try to extract a lot of mileage out of... <laughs> oh, come he words. Out of something that, that oh. isn't destined to go the distance. You know how in WWE, the same people sometimes come back as a different character? Yeah. It's like they used to be this happy-go-lucky Conley Woods. And now and, they're the and, Iron Sheik. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Bit of random action off Desperate Ravings. It's uh, a man leap, leap. but it looks things gone away. It could be moderately significant. So, Conley, Solemn Simulacrum from the last troll. Conley's got three cards in hand. It's a Viridian Emissary, I believe. Looks like. Gone away. Um, back we go to Conley. Oh, he's just peeled a grave tight. Pat does have mana leak. Mana up. I think he's yes. thrown one in the bin. He does. He does. Couldn't see, couldn't see the entirety of his hand. Conley kind of has to count his options. Whether it's it's worth trying to, f do you go for it and then? I mean, is this the play where you win the GP by resolving Grave Titan right here, right now? Arguably, it is. It's it's certainly but, an attractive idea, yeah, yes. but so let's see. He's tapped five for the acidic, acidic slime because he feels he's got Thrun on board. He's got Solemn Sim. He's still got his aim off. He's that there mana. was a mana leap, so I'll just. Pile in. Liliana's gonna die. We are so close to a famous victory for Conley Woods here. Pat only with three cards in his hand. He needs to. He needs to. Now that he's dropped the land, he's got two. 
He's got the Desperate Ravens in his graveyard. I guess take some beatings and maybe Blue Sun Zenith for a lot would be nice. Had two in his board. But I, He's I got can't seven really imagine it would they, only be four. they came in. Attack, attack. Chaven looks at two cards. That Snapcaster Mage has been in play for a long time. Yeah. It's going to get in the way of Thrun. He doesn't want Conley. Grave Titan. Shapen looks, says yes. That hurt. That's going to hurt. Unless Pat has something significant. End of turn. And you're right. There is the blue sun For scene. four. Draw a bunch. Needs to be a great bunch. It needs to be a pretty good bunch. Well, that life finale certainly would be really good. Right here. Oh, that would be epic. Patrick Chapin, what do you have right now? He, Just he, like he, in his quarterfinals, there are three lines on the table. One of them this time is his lands. One is Conley Woods lands. And then the third row of permanents is a, all Conley. If he has a land and a blue sun, and a black sun zenith, he can, certainly, he can wipe the board as well. Because he can get it for six. We're going to start with the Ponder. Start with the Ponder. It's the Sam Black play all over again. One, two, three. My money is that they are going on the bottom. He's going to check and check and check again. Karn, that's not a Karn liberated at the top of his hand, is it? Did not see what. No, they're going on top, so he feels like he's still in there. Honda is gone. Massive moments here. Life's finale. There it Life's is! Finale. Life's finale! Not only is he going to get to wipe the board, Incredible. he's going to get to. He's going to probably put three of those titans in the bin, the graveyard. Off he goes. That's staggering magic. They used to call life's finale one of those griefer cards because it's like, yeah, it's kill everything. By the way. And by the way, yeah. It, it, it. And uh, Patrick's got some choices now about what he wants to get rid of. Well, Titans are a significant part of the of Conley's offense, so... Interesting that Life's Finale says destroy and does not have a clause about cannot be regenerated. Correct. And Thrun could have lived through that, yeah. Yeah. But again, I think, I think you're right. Uh, Conley, Conley just goes for it at that point. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the I think it's the right play, if because Chapin's either got to have the Les Chanel in hand or got to have the Blue Suns so that he can get into it. So one Grave Titan goes, two Grave Titans go. So yep. he has just gone. Yep, Black's the right answer. It's gone. So, so they, probably um, the predominance of uh, Conley's plan the rest of the way out is is <laughs> draw well. Find another Titan. Or... Ink Moth Nexus. Ink Moth Nexus and, and Wolfram. And Wolfram. Oh. Just devastating. It's pretty swingy. I think Wrath Effects are pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I know you do. Yeah. But I mean, you can't gonna, call that uh, you, you can't call that an overextension. No, no, not at all. I'm, I'm not criticizing Conley there at all. It felt like the Grand Prix was on the line by playing Grave Titan and resolving it. Yes. And once again, there's one life's finale in the board. Yeah. So the poison begins. And now here is Glissa the Traitor. Well, certainly be oh, and Patchy has to read Glissa. Well, it's fair to say it's the first and the only time that he will have seen Glissa the Traitor this weekend. Uh, I think all the... Outside of dealer box, arguably. Yes. Um, Conley has Psalm Simulacrum and the, the Green Sphere in his deck. Yep, and it's just an artifact card that you get back, so yep. the Sphere is perfectly live. Although the, uh, all the Solemn is clearly is, be is, infinitely better, but just he's allowed to. Oh, Olivia! 
That Live changes the things. Zarin. Now, Conley hasn't played any of his creature removal yet. Mm -hmm. He's got Liliana of his own. Seems like now might be a reasonable time to do so. First strike and death touch for Glissa. 3-3, oh. legendary creature. The Zombie Elf. That's a great bit of flavor right there. Zombie, zombie Elf. Counterspell from Chapin. Is that Death's Verdict? And now, go for the throat. Ah, <laughs> These two are really going at it. So good to watch. That's going to trigger Glissa. 8.25 here on the east coast of America, 5.25 back on the west coast. He's going to get, the, he's going to get as we predicted, the Solemn Simulacrum. He's going to... I think he's going to slow roll playing it. Is that the value? I mean, this is three. Solemn is two. That's five. That's half of Chapin's ten. As opposed to three, three, three. Well, he's still, he's still three. He's gonna he's gonna battle with Lissa right now. Sure. That's a seven four. No. Yeah, I think I think Solemn is the is value because Chapin has to. I mean, he gets he gets the land. Pat's gonna mana leak that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's significant value because he's gonna get the land and. Pat's going to have to deal with it. I mean, he's at seven. Yep. So we'll see with only one card in hand, although, again, Pat has two desperate ravings in the graveyard. Yep. So Forbidden Alchemy was a great card last week in Austin. Great card again this weekend at the death in Orlando. Early Sunday morning, Monday morning in Europe. And most of our Japanese fans probably at work already on Monday morning right now. You can watch it back, and you should, because this has been a great one. Doomblade is one of the ones that goes that went away. And there's Snapcaster. Snapcaster Mage. And Collie reaches out and puts his Glissa in the graveyard. Oh. One card for Kami. Has Ink Moth Nexus. And <laughs> Garouk. First, okay, first okay. appearance of Garouk Primal Hunter we've seen all weekend. Absolutely. Goes to four loyalty. And Conley is on the table. With a 3 3 beast. Well, the first thing he's going to do, that, that's going to do, is protect Garouk from. The Snapcaster attacks. Mm -hmm. Minus three on Garouk gets Conley drawing cards equal to the greatest power among creatures he controls, so he would draw three cards. And that's, minus six, that's that's the ultimate, and boy is it ever an ultimate. That's six, gonna, six green worm. That's I I think that that might be a risky play right now. Mm -hmm. I think putting some more beasts in play first sure. is the right call. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the minus, uh, minus six, he's a long way from it. So, uh, six, six for each land you control. Yes. Uh, so. And the life finale has gone, and because of perfect information with the deck list, Conley knows that that particularly epic play will not happen again. Yes. There's still some Black Sun Zenith. Indeed. For Pat. And in the same way, Pat knows that Thrown the Last Troll will not be coming back because right. there was only one of those uh, out of the board for Conley. So Chapin, down to two cards in his hand, looks like he's going to play one of them. Clock is so ticking here because if Patrick can draw back into Blue Sun Zenith, suddenly... Another Olivia. Mm -hmm. That's the other one. 
has two. She can certainly control the board. Mm -hmm. Spend two dealer damage, and then you can subsequently gain control. Call me, playing off the top right now. And of course, the top of his deck has been significant, well, not significantly, but has been weakened yes. by the uh, lack of Grave Titans. Yeah. Only comes in with the Beast, not with the Ink Moth. Ink moth. The thing is, Olivia can deal one damage. There's Kessick Wolf run there. Ooh. As a judge, I really hate it when players tap land and untap them, especially when there's some land already tapped. Sure. Because that's a that, that's that's certainly a, a chance for something unusual to happen. Obviously, the I wrong mean, amount to untap. At the some wrong. Point. The right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, we have a good look here. Pat certainly has declared his block. One card against no cards. So tense. It's a, a real amphitheater feel to the feature match area because there's raised platforms around uh, the yes. arena, so it, it really is a bear pit over there. You can't really see that, uh, but I can assure you, are a lot of people Shape him down to match. three. Off the trample. There's a beast for Conley. But Patrick Pat Chapin. Ponders again. Oh, no, Our that's Des forbidden. forbidden Alchemy. So once again, despite life's finale, Chapin back on the ropes, 1-0 down, 20-3 to three down. One poison to nil down. Yes. If you will. If you will. Two cards, I'm pretty certain at least one is a Dragon Skull Summit. Or some similar land. Pat's got to get a lot of mileage out of what he has in his hand in his graveyard right now. Mm -hmm. He's probably flashing back a Desperate Ravings. Shores so, 2. Doesn't even look to see what's, what's there. So, away goes an island. Okay, so a swing and a miss from, from Conley, if you will. Looks like a blue, a blue sun zenith and a Liliana of the Veil. Vale? I think it is. <laughs> Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Put something in the bin. Oh, might as well hit you for t uh, hit Garuk. Right. Uh, and that takes Garuk down to, I believe, just one loyalty. It's just peeking over our scoreboard line there. Pat tapped out right now. He's going to get some Ink Moth to the face, I think. Conley's looking. Oh. Going to kill off Liliana. And get a beast. Yeah. Then cast Yens. Thin his deck a little bit. Get another land. And still chafing at three. Which is, which is going to be really difficult for Pat to deal with a trample off of Wolf Run. Sure. So. Because Pat's going to have to have, I mean, he's got the Blue Sun Zenith, but he's going to have to have action now. Post post the Zenith. So it's like, how many can he afford to draw to find what he right. needs? He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten mana. Looks like he's drawn Desperate Ravens. So... Desperate Ravens is a pretty efficient way to see some cards. Obviously, Blue Sun Zenith can see many more. But, again, without business right here, right now, 
Yep. He loses. Yep. So we're right on the brink again. Chabin has struggled mightily and given us some great entertainment. He has, he has, a la Jerry Cooney, a <laughs> fine boxer from the 70s, taken many, many heavy blows and still stayed standing. But I think in our analogy here, Conley Woods is going to be Joe Frazier, mm. and the heavy punching is just going to continue. This is without the Grave Titans. And this is without the Grave Titans. Obviously, Pat, deep, deep in the tank here. I, I think Desperate Ravings is his only, is his only choice. The Blue Sun waiting for the, to do the Blue much, Suns. It, it, it. Too much mana invested. Right. I mean, does he have, he doesn't have anything like Vapor Snag. And the, the Doom Blade is in his yard. Play, go for it's a mana leak, I think. Okay. And now, is this the end? Conley Woods across the table, Conley Woods on the table. Garrick Primal Hunter, Solemn Simulacrum, up against Snapcaster Mage. One half of Delver Mage, but not in this matchup. Looks and looks and looks. Eight mana still available. I think, uh, yeah, I think he's got to he's got to go with another desperate ravings flashback. Is there a go for the throat S mm -hmm. still left in his library? Ratchet bomb. Christine Talisman's not going to save him. I imagine Pat is pouring over the entirety of his deck list right now. Mm -hmm. In his head. In his just head. Because it's not in front of him. Yes, in his head. We we have the deck list in front of us. Indeed. We're pouring over the entirety yes. of his deck list. Jamin again resists the urge to even look. Barney says, okay, you lose a blue sun zenith. That what might... does Chabin have left? Ancient Grudge, a land, something red. The second, oh no, that's, huh? What was it? Are we going to get another, another Ancient look? Grudge? No, he only has. Oh, yeah, two from the sideboard. Could be Khan? No, he had. Two, so it could be the second age of Grudge. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that was Karn. Okay. Although if it was Karn, it, it's, it's, it's a dead card at the moment. It's unliberated. <laughs> it's not Karn, not particularly liberated. Oh, that is. Yeah, it is Karn. There's the island. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that is the land for the turn. He had ten, we, we counted at the start. Well, there's land eleven. Fighting so desperately to stay in this one. One, two, three, four, five, six untapped. Pass the turn. Conley draws what looks like a primeval titan. Which is not going to get Junior Ianaga defeated Conley Woods with big fat titans. Conley Woods brought Titans to battle. Shuhei Nakamura behind uh, Conley with uh, Pat Cox, Zach Hill, Martin Yuza. I think it's quite I think, a quartet. I think, I think Shuhei was uh, was texting Ianaga son at that point. Yeah. Oh, and he, I think I he think, has learned. Young Conley, he, he has learned. <laughs> Again, for Conley, I think there's nothing to play around here. I, I think I think you, Grace. You, you simply go for the jugular. Grace for impact. Here they come. In. In. Chapin blocks. 
simulacrum currently unblocked. Conley's got to know the ancient grudges. Yeah. Yes. So there goes Solemn Simulacrum. Card. Pump. Chapin. Pump for just enough, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And still has Titan mana up in case something untoward happens. And there's something underward. Chapin looking and again. That and is there's it! Conley Woods! is your Grand Prix Orlando champion for 2012, defeating Patrick Chavin by two games to zero. A tremendous final. And Conley Woods gets it done. Got all the way to the semi-finals of Worlds. Couldn't quite get past Junior Ianaga, though where Titans are plenty in the way. And here in Orlando, he is your champion, the second North American champion of the year. Great effort, Conley Woods. Tremendous effort.